Hello and welcome to Hemoglobin A1C. My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. Hopefully I can make this incredibly easy for you too. What happens to create what's called hemoglobin A1C is that we have glucose floating around in the bloodstream, so the picture on the left, and then we have our normal red blood cell with our hemoglobin, and it's just floating around there. Glucose will bind to hemoglobin in a set pattern. When glucose binds to hemoglobin, we call that glycolated hemoglobin. So you can see on the right side, we have our hemoglobins over there with glucose that is attached to them. Glucose attaches to hemoglobin in a direct proportion to the highest level of glucose that there is in the bloodstream. So if the glucose level goes up, then more glucose will bind to hemoglobin and we'll have a higher glycolated hemoglobin. What this diagram is illustrating is that relationship between our hemoglobin A1C and the glucose level. So as the glucose level goes up, the hemoglobin A1C level goes up, and there's that linear relationship. This relationship is not the same as just measuring a blood glucose. We'll talk about that in a minute. As the blood glucose level peaks, we're going to see more glucose binding hemoglobin, and we will have a higher hemoglobin A1C. One of the ways that hemoglobin A1C is used is to be able to determine whether or not we are having spikes in the blood glucose level that could be causing the patient to have additional complications. So as I mentioned, Glucose is going to bind to hemoglobin in the highest concentration that it ever was. We've noticed a linear relationship as well between hemoglobin A1C and complications. The higher the hemoglobin A1C, the greater the risk of having complications of diabetes. So what does this hemoglobin A1C do then if we're measuring that highest level of glucose well keep in mind that a red blood cell's lifespan is about 180 days therefore we're going to be having new red blood cells forming all the time and some of our old red blood cells are going to be dying off in this process we will start to develop new levels of hemoglobin a1c but it takes a while because those red blood cells could last 180 days so let's say that we have a red blood cell that was just born this morning. We do not have good control of the blood glucose. And what ends up happening is the blood glucose level goes high. Well, that red blood cell is going to carry that glycolated hemoglobin in that high concentration until it dies. So for the next 180 days, that particular red blood cell is going to have this high concentration of glucose. In other words, it's going to contribute to a high hemoglobin A1C level. Now, keep in mind, though, there is going to be some red blood cells that are going to be born later today or tomorrow, and those may be binding glucose in a much lower concentration, and therefore the overall or average amount of glucose bound to hemoglobin is going to start to decrease then, and our hemoglobin A1C will start to come down. This can be used the hemoglobin A1C can be used to screen for diabetes. That's a possibility. Take a look at the hemoglobin A1C, and if we see large, maybe a level of 8 or something like that, that will give us a, a, probably a good idea that maybe this patient has diabetes. It can be used to monitor treatment, and here's where we use it most of the time. The hemoglobin A1C gives us a better indication of our management, of our treatment. Are we keeping that blood glucose within a good normal range all the time? Are we having spikes? If we're using this to diagnose diabetes, we would use the number of 6.5, and this is measured in a percentage. So it's the percentage of red blood cells that are bound with glucose or glycolated hemoglobin. Diabetics should aim for about a 7%. When we start getting our glucose level down, our hemoglobin A1C down, lower than 7, we start to have problems with hypoglycemia. 
So yeah, the lower the hemoglobin A1C, the lower the number of complications, but if we get it too low, then we start bottoming out and the patient has hypoglycemia. For every 1% reduction in our hemoglobin A1C, we can see a 21% decrease in diabetes-related deaths, 16% decrease in myocardial infarction, 37% decrease in microvascular complications, and 43% decrease in amputations or death. So huge decrease in complications related to decreasing this hemoglobin A1C. So how does a hemoglobin A1C differ from a fasting blood glucose? Well, take a look at this graph down here at the bottom of the page, and you'll see that we have this glucose level that is going up and down and up and down, and part of this may be due to treatment. We're giving some insulin here and there. So there may be some of this up and down that's related to that and meals, etc. So there's going to be changes in our blood glucose as we go throughout the day. If we take a single glucose measurement, maybe before we eat or after we eat, whatever the case may be, we're getting one little slice in time. We're not getting a picture of the overall blood glucose. However, the hemoglobin A1C you'll see is going to measure that peak See that one peak we have toward the right? It's going to measure that peak, and it's going to hold on to that for about the next 180 days. So we usually think of looking at hemoglobin A1C measurements in terms of maybe two or three months. Whether Rather than the fasting blood glucose or our single glucose measurements, we may be doing those several times a day. Hemoglobin binds at the highest glucose concentration but new hemoglobin is produced on a regular basis, which is going to cause changes in our hemoglobin A1C. But, you know, keep in mind that our hemoglobin is not turning over that fast. Our red blood cells are turning over about every 180 days. So this process, even though it's continuously going on, is not going to significantly change our hemoglobin A1C level overnight. It's going to be a period of time, maybe months. So the bottom line is hemoglobin A1C is helpful for determining our overall glucose control. Complications of diabetes decrease with decreases in our hemoglobin A1C. So obviously we'd want to see that hemoglobin A1C coming down. We talk about hemoglobin A1C being a goal of 7 for our diabetics. And levels less than 7 are often associated with hypoglycemic con complications. So we want to be careful about levels less than 7 in our diabetic. Some diabetics are able to tolerate that, but in general we say, let's go for a goal of 7. Thank you for joining me for Hemoglobin A1C. This is David Woodruff, and until next time, bye now. <laughs>